everyone. Jamie Maloney here, host of the all-new That Business Show 2.0, where business becomes show business. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on TampaBayRadio.com. All shows available on demand on iTunes and over on ThatYouTubeChannel.com. Just put in ThatYouTubeChannel.com. We've made it easy to find all of the high-definition videos available on demand. And also visit ThatBusinessShow.com. All the audios are easily available and shareable on demand over on ThatBusinessShow.com as well. We're going to be talking about stocks, bonds, and a little bit about real estate investing on uh, today's uh, program. we got Anmal Singh, founder and CEO of Live Traders, uh, with us today. You can learn more about this at that website, livetraders.com. So, Anmal, welcome to the program today. Thanks for having me. So, first off, tell us a little bit about this. This is a trading platform that you founded uh, several years ago. I think, what, 2014, am I correct? Yes, that's right. Okay. And you were a, uh, an investor yourself. You founded this platform. First off, just tell us about this platform, Live Traders. Sure. So Live Traders is created as an online trading community you know, for traders, uh, by traders. And uh, what we basically do is we provide people the training and education that they need in order to take control of their own investments and their trading. And you know, a lot of people come in who actually want to do this as a full-time career not really investing, so we help them out to come up with a trading plan for them and uh, give them the strategy that they need to turn this into a career. Now, what um, kind of resources... That, have, you know, different tools. What kind of resources uh, are found inside Live Traders? I know years ago I dabbled with uh, some type of uh, stock investing uh, platforms and tools and never really got into it. I'm, I fell into the real estate uh, space myself. Uh, but I knew there were platforms that were predicting where a stock would go. I remember a lot about like the double peaks, things like that. Tell me a little bit about how your platform works. Right. So we've actually done it a little bit differently to give it a more of a personal touch. And rather than just giving people, oh, this looks good or this looks bad, what we actually do is I, me and my partner, we actually trade live in front of them on a webinar-based platform every single day. So people can see our screens, they can hear our audio in real time while we're actually trading. So I think that's way better because people can see us getting in and out of trades. That helps them learn even better because they can see us win, they can also see us lose. And it just creates a more realistic environment for people to learn. Okay, so what is your background in uh, the investing uh, uh, world, stocks and bonds? How did you get started? Did you uh, begin just as a day trader, a little bit of cash, and you did well? Just tell me a little about your story. Sure. So I actually started trading uh, when I was in college. Uh, initially, I started off just doing research, um, just writing a blog, typing in my thoughts, typing in my research. And then eventually, I was contacted by Yahoo Finance to uh, write articles for them on different companies and other websites I used to write articles on. Uh, and that was just a research analyst as a, uh, they used to pay me per article, you know, and I was still in college. I enjoyed getting paid per article. And then what I did was I kept on collecting that money. And then once I have enough money, I actually started trading on my own. And, uh, you know, that led me into being hired by a trading firm. They hired me as their trader. I used to trade their capital in exchange. I used to give them a percentage of uh, profits. So that's how I really got my start. But then in 2014, I decided that, you know, I'm going to go out on my own now that I have the capital. I don't really need to, you know, uh, somebody else's capital and give them a percentage. So that's why I branched out on my own. Okay, so Live Traders is a platform. People can invest uh, in any type of uh, uh, security, whether it's stocks, bonds, uh, foreign exchange, all that stuff available on your platform? Right, so we focus on stocks, options, and forex. So we don't really do you know, binary trades or anything like that. We mainly just stick to stocks as a day trading uh, and uh, swing trading. And Forex, we do more uh, longer-term trading, but we do have resources for those who look to do, uh, you know, short-term trading. Okay, and how does your platform work in terms of uh, the service level? I noticed that you also mentioned that you are a consultant to many traders, so I'm sure that's an upper-level, uh, you know, uh, availability with your platform. But can people just come on and use that as a user without any type of uh, uh, consulting engagement? How do the different plans work on live traders? Right, so usually people come into our website. They uh, download, like, a free ebook. They learn a little bit about us, how we trade, our style. They go through the blog post that we have on there. And then from there, they go into one of the programs or the live rooms. So the live rooms is where people, where bulk of the community is uh, because they come in, they trade live with us every day. You know, just before this uh, phone call that we're having, you know, I was trading live in front of my members and, you know, calling trades and, you know, showing them what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So that's where people really come in. They pick a style, either Forex or stocks. Both have the separate trading rooms that people go into. 
but they can chat with other traders and then, you know, they can also watch us trade live. So is that's this, one of the things that people where they come in from. Is this a platform designed for people of all skill levels from beginners to intermediate to advanced trainers? Can people of all uh, walks of investing uh, get something from this? Correct. Everybody comes in. Everybody, we have beginners, we have experts, we have fund managers. We have all sorts of people that come in. You know, of course, somebody who's totally brand new might take a couple of weeks to, you know, learn what we're even talking about. But uh, apart from that, you know, we get all sorts of people in here. Now, the beginners, do they just come, uh, kind of come in there and you said you trade in front of them? Do they just copy what you're doing or do they make their own, their own decisions? Right. So initially, people come in with the hopes of just copying, but we make it pretty clear that that's not, the, that's not why we're here. You know, we're here to teach. We're here to, so you can come up with your own plan and not just rely on us. Uh, so, but people do come in. They do you know, take some most of our trades that we're taking. They kind of trade with us as a team. Um, but however, we have educational programs as well that people can sign up for online, or they can sign up for one of our courses or, you know, one-on-one coaching. And, you know, that's where they do bulk of the learning. The room is kept mainly for people who have maybe gone through the program or know a little bit about trading and that they can actually, you know, follow what we're actually doing there. How does live traders then differentiate itself from some of the other trading platforms uh, that are on the marketplace out there? Is it the education and the skill of you and your team, or are there certain tools within inside the program that are different from some of those other trading platforms? Well, the biggest difference, I would say, is transparency. You know, a lot of the other firms uh, focus on, you know, selling courses or programs, but we're actually executing what they've learned in the program in front of their eyes every single day. The room runs from Monday to Friday. So what they learned in the course, they can actually see us applying what they've learned in real time. And I think that's the best part about it is the transparency. Because even if I'm down on the day, you know, they can see it live in front of their screens because they get to see everything. Right. So um, that's one of the biggest differentiators is the transparency. So what drew you to the investing world? You said you've been doing this since college. You've been stocks and bonds, also real estate, also invested in tech companies. I mean, you're a serial entrepreneur. What is it? Were you just naturally drawn and skilled in, in investing? Or was it something you had to teach yourself and, and learn uh, uh, some hard lessons uh, through uh, some investments? Right. So, I um, mean, you know, I would love to have a reason why I got into trading. But it all comes down to, you know, one word, which is money. You know, I saw people doing really well in the stock market. You grew up watching movies where you know that the stock market is a place where, you know, money can be made. So that's what initially drew me to it. But then when I eventually started trading, you know, I got this urge of curiosity to learn more because every day is a challenge. And I think that's what I enjoy. I'm not good at, I've never had a job before, you know, before being a consultant on my own. I've never had a job. So I don't think I'm suitable for a job position where you're doing the same task over and over. Right. That's why I gravitated towards trading where every day is a challenge. How much does fundamentals, because I have a degree in finance and I can remember studying this. I've never, I've just dabbled in it a handful of times and never done anything uh, much with stocks and, and, and bonds investing. How much does fundamentals of a company come into play with valuation versus maybe just sheer luck or maybe inside information? Talk to me a little bit about succeeding in stocks or in day trading in stock and bond investing. Right. So the type of trading that we do is uh, focus on technical-based trading, which is focus on the prior history of the stock and, uh, you know, the charts and the graphs and what they're doing and coming up with strategies based on that. So there's a difference there. Uh, if you're focusing on investing, which is long-term, where you plan on holding stock for three years, five years minimum, then yes, you would, lo- you would like to know fundamentals. You would like to know it's a good company. It's not going to go out of business. You know, a company has some growth prospects. So fundamentals come in only when you plan on holding stuff for three, five years minimum, right? If you're doing shorter term trading like I am doing, where we're getting in and out of stocks every day or maybe holding it for a few minutes or holding it for a few days or a few weeks, in that case of trading, uh, the fundamentals don't apply at all. A lot of times I don't even know the names of the companies that I'm trading (laughs) because I'm strictly trading based on the charts. So what is it, uh, a course in statistics at that point? So you're basing uh, basing, uh, your your decisions on statistical uh, models at that point versus fundamentals in in, uh, in day trading? Correct, but statistics, not in a traditional form of statistics. It's mainly based on uh, pictures. So graphs, we have a certain way a pattern should look on a chart. And then we, and obviously those patterns will have their own statistics, like this pattern has a 58% chance of winning. And um, if it has a 58% chance of winning, you know, you just keep pushing the button because overall it's going to be profitable. 
right? Right. So that's what we're trying to do. We find patterns with probabilities. Now, when day trading, I know a lot of people get into the, the options market. I heard you mention the options market earlier. How lucrative is that and how difficult is it to really understand the options market? I think options are really, really easy to understand, uh, but you can always complicate anything because uh, options are simple. In a nutshell, I mean, if, for somebody, if I was to explain options to somebody, I could probably explain it in less than five minutes. But, you know, I'm going to save you the trouble for that. <laughs> um, but options are easy to learn in that regard. However, you can create, you know, complex strategies from options, which is the complex part. But uh, the, just learning basic options and how to utilize that in your own trading is a really simple thing to learn. Yeah, I remember, like I said, I have a degree in finance, and I remember in my advanced investments class, one of the uh, projects for the semester was designing 20 different financial models in Excel based on whatever they, what it, whatever it is we had to do. I look at them today, and this was 15 years ago, and I was like, I don't know how the heck I figured this out. <laughs> but they're very, very complicated, <laughs> gra you know, with graphs and numbers and lines intersecting all over the place. But uh, yeah, you're right. It can definitely Definitely, definitely get uh, very uh, complicated. I uh, got to take a uh, break here. Currently uh, talking with Anmol Singh. He's the founder and CEO of Live Traders, an online trading uh, platform where you can actually see in real time and work with him on trades. He shows you what he and his team are trading in and out of, both on a daily basis and a long-term basis. And so whether you're a beginner, an intermediary, or an advanced uh, user, or I should say an investor of stocks, bonds, options, you can definitely benefit uh, from checking out his platform LiveTraders.com. Coming back from the break, I'm going to talk a little bit more about where he sees the stock market going. We all know it's at record highs right now. What's driving that? Is that going to keep going that way? Also, he's been involved in real estate investing and also uh, uh, funded a couple of tech companies too. So he's an all-around investor in various walks of life. So we talk a little bit more with him when we come back from the break. You're listening to That Business Show 2.0 with Jamie Maloney, where business becomes show business. Hi, welcome to Yeagers. We just want to take a minute and show you what we're all about. Uh, at Yeagers, our primary business is hardwood flooring, although we are remodelers for kitchen, bath, and general construction. We operate a fleet of shop-at-home vans that have all the flooring-type products, hardwood flooring, laminate flooring, tiles, stone, what have you. So we're able to come out first with products in our vehicles and take a look at the setting, how the colors will work, and then to be able to come up with some options and ideas for you. If that's not good enough, we have a large distribution center that we inventory product and have a nice display area.
Hey everyone, Jamie Money back here again on That Business Show 2.0, where business becomes show business. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. on TampaBayRadio.com. All shows made available on demand on iTunes and on YouTube. Currently talking with Anmol Singh, founder and CEO of Live Traders, an online trading platform that works with people in all areas of uh, skill level and investments. And you can also see them trade in real time, the, uh, the creator Anmol Singh and his team. And so you can really learn... Real, I should say stock and bond investing, options investings with Unmall, a very skilled uh, investor. Learn more at LiveTraders.com. So, Unmall, I just got some just some questions about the stock market. We're at record high here, 20000 on the Dow. Everybody's saying it's because of this or it's because of that. It's going to go here. It's not going to go there. Well, first off, why are we at record highs on the Dow, in your opinion, and where is it going? Right. I think uh, we're at a high, not really because of any – you know, fundamental reason, although the policies that, you know, the new president has been uh, saying are pro-growth for the market. So that's what the reason the market is going up. It's fueled by the rallies in the banks. You know, the banks are going up. All the bank stocks have been going up. That's because Trump said he's going to, you know, take out the Dodd-Frank regulation, mm-hmm. which is going to increase revenues for the banks. So when the banks go up, what happens is the market follows because the banks always lead the market. So that's one of the reasons Second reason is a lot of the steel stocks have been going up because, you know, he's been talking about how whatever steel projects are going to happen, you know, they're going to use American steel. He's just saying that every single day. And because of that, the steel stocks are going up. Mm-hmm. So when the steel stocks go up, when the banks go up, you know, the market has to follow, right? Because the market is made up of stocks. Right. You want the stocks going up, the market will go up. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, there, I hear so much about tech and the opportunities in tech. The NASDAQ is a, a collection, in my understanding, of tech companies, but we don't see the movement inside the NASDAQ like we were seeing in the Dow. Why do we not see as much movement in the NASDAQ if tech is all the rave? Right. Uh, one of the reasons for that is because increasingly what's happening is NASDAQ has a lot of, uh, and it used to only be tech stocks uh, a few years ago, but now in the NASDAQ, we have biotech stocks, you know, healthcare stocks. We have, uh, you know, a lot of other industries now inside NASDAQ. And some of the tech stocks, uh, you know, if you say, you know, Twitter, GoPro, or a lot of these ones, they haven't been doing that well. So it all kind of balances itself out. Whereas the Dow, Dow's only 30 stocks. Right. You know, Dow's only 30 stocks. So if those 30 stocks are going up, the Dow is always going to be do better than NASDAQ, whereas the NASDAQ has thousands and thousands of stocks. So, you know, that kind of balances things out. And uh, Dow only has all the big stocks like, you know, Johnson & Johnson or whatever. But those stocks have been really strong recently, and that's probably one of the reasons it's been going up. And also, one thing to note is whenever Trump holds these meetings, he calls them the listeners meeting, right, business meeting. Mm-hmm. He's listening to all the business leaders, and all of the business leaders are companies that are in the Dow, <laughs> you know. Right. So think about it in that perspective that – if they're close to the president, you know, they're going to have good things come for them. Right, right. And that's probably one of the reasons why people see anticipation in the movement. Now, what about the, the Fed interest rate? It's been, you know, zero, or I don't know where it's at now. It's still, I think, below 1%. Uh, a lot of talk about how that influences the market. And it's only got one direction to go, and that is up. Uh, you know, wards off uh, inflation. Where there are a lot of people say there's no problem with inflation, but things are 10 times as costly as they were in 1980. I don't know how they're not, how inflation is not, not a problem. I, I just don't really understand all of that entirely but you know how is the the fed interest rate and you know fighting inflation going to come into play in the market over the next few years right so i can give you my own brief general overview regarding that but as far as uh you know my trading is concerned since we're doing it so technically it all comes down in the end to what the chart looks like mm-hmm. what the pattern looks like what the stats say so a lot of uh, my trading i don't factor in any of these uh decisions or interest rates because, you know, I'm getting in and out based on the technical chart. Mm -hmm. However, that being said, uh, you know, the Fed is raising interest rates, which is, you know, usually causes a little downward movement in the market. But what's also happening now is that Fed's raising interest rate because they think that the economy is now in a good position, that it's healthy, and now they can finally raise the rates. So what that does is it sends mixed signals. You know, we're raising rates, which is not good. But at the same time, we're raising rates because the economy is now good, right? Mm -hmm. So if the economy is good, the market continues to stay strong. And that is one of the reasons why, you know, I don't think the raising rates is really going to affect it that much as it would have if they raised it, let's say, last year. If they raised it last year, it would have probably caused some sort of a decline or a sell-off. But now that they're doing it, it's already up so much. And, you know, it's healthy. The economy is healthy. It's optimism is already there that people don't 
really, uh, you know, they don't really care about the interest rates being raised. For somebody who wants to get into day trading, what would you advise in terms of how much, you know, disposable capital that they have and how much time does it take to really learn and understand what you know, maybe not at your level, but enough to make somebody, you know, a player in the day trading market? How much time do they need to invest? Right. So this is an answer that most people are not going to like because of the fact that I'm brutally honest. Mm -hmm is don't expect to make anything at least in your first six months. Mm -hmm. You know, you might make money, but just come up with the expectation that you're not going to make it. And I personally didn't make any money my whole first year of trading. I only started making money in the second year once I sorted out my own psychological issues. So that's one of the reasons, you know, people don't talk about. But your mindset has a lot to do with the market, right? Because you right. are the one pushing the button. So it has a lot to do. And the whole first year I was battling with my own self. So the first year I didn't make any money, but second year onwards is when I started doing really well and from every year it kept on getting better. So I think when new people come in, they're going to go through those same emotions when your money is on the line. So it will take six months to adapt to that as a minimum. Yeah, you definitely got to have um, a strong mindset to, to sit through a year of, of losses and bad decision making and just see yourself lose and lose and lose. What you said you had to bite all your own psychological issues. What was it? Were you just fighting against what all the experienced people were saying, thinking, no, nah, that can't be right. That can't be right. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. What was the issue that, uh, that you overcame that allowed you to be a more effective trader? Right. It's the ability to... Uh, admit that you can be wrong, right? <laughs> right? It's the ego that you have to control because in trading, you know, we often say, do you want to make money or do you want to be right? You know, and I want it to be right. That's one of the things where you would, stock is going against you and your chart or your pattern strategy says to get out, but you're still holding in the hopes that it comes back up. Right. Right. And that's the issue that a lot of traders will have when they start. It's the issue that every trader goes through and so did I, is the thing that, okay, you could be wrong. It's all right. Take your small little loss and move on to the next trade rather than hoping that one stock comes back because sometimes they won't. Right. They won't come back. And how much money does so somebody need to have people. to get started? I mean, do they need a spare 50, a spare 100,000, more or less to kind of get through that first year? What would you advise in terms of capital to have sitting in an account to play with? Right. So a good thing nowadays is you don't need a lot of capital as you did, let's say, five years ago. Now the brokerage companies, they accept smaller accounts and you're able to trade with that. So as far as if we're looking to trade currencies, the foreign exchange, I mean, you can literally start with $500, mm -hmm. right? Because most brokers will open an account with 100 bucks in Forex. Wow. And there's no regulation in Forex as to, you know, you not being able to day trade or anything like that. And you also get a lot of leverage. The Forex brokers will give you 100 times your capital or 500 times your capital. Some offshore brokers give 2,000 times your capital. Wow. So if you start with 500 bucks, you're getting all that money to play with. And, uh, you know, and, and if you know what you're doing, you could really boost your returns from that. But if you and don't... As as stock trading is concerned, <laughs> uh, you know, if you don't, yeah, if you don't, it's a double-edged sword, right? <laughs> right. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going you're gonna to lose your money, you know, in a blink of an eye. Right, right, right. So right that's now. one of the things you have to be aware of. Now, you also have uh, been a real estate investor. How much of your time do you divide between stocks and bonds versus real estate these days? Uh, so real, real estate now, I mean, real estate is one of those business that the effort mainly goes in when you're, you know, looking for an opportunity and then actually, you know, buying the property. Once you've actually bought it, it's pretty hands off if you know what you're doing, because now they're property management companies. Right. Right. Give them a little bit of capital. Sure, you're gonna, your returns are going to go down just a little bit, but at least you don't have to manage it. Right. So mm -hmm. what you need to do is once you get a property, right, let's say your mortgage payment on that property is three thousand dollars a month. And let's say you manage to rent it out at thirty five hundred dollars a month. Now you're getting five hundred month, five hundred dollars a month cash flow and your mortgage is being paid off. So out of that five hundred, you find a property management company, give them two hundred bucks a month. Right? right. So now you're still making 300 bucks a month of free money and your mortgage is being paid off. And right. that's the way I kind of look at it. So you can move on to the next property. And so do you spend more time, though? Do you enjoy the stocks and the bonds more or the real estate? I imagine you enjoy the, uh, the stocks and the bonds more, though, right? Uh, yeah, because, you know, stocks and bonds, I consider it as, you know, I call it two ways of investing. One is income producing. The other is wealth building. So real estate is wealth building, right? That, that's growing, growing, growing. And I'm looking to create cash and just grow some amount to a bigger amount. So that's wealth building. It's more passive. It's more long term. Where stocks is income producing, where I'm looking to, you know, rely on that to pay my bills. So 
Stock trading is more income producing. You're generating cash flow. You're generating income. Real estate is more wealth building where you're looking long term. Now, in the marketplace, uh, in the stock market long term, where are the opportunities for people that are long term investors? Should they be uh, buying up tech stocks? Uh, what would you say? I think long term for now, I would just advise, you know, stay out. So, you know, you missed a lot of the moves. So, you know, I hate to tell people to stay out because they always like me to give them like a pick or something. Mm -hmm. But I would advise just hold off for a little bit. You know, market's been going up since 2008. Mm -hmm. It's not really the best time to start investing right now. Uh, it's a really good time to trade because with trading, you're getting and getting out every single day. You're not really, you know, you're not you're holding or you're having risk. Right. So trading, is, it's a great, it's a brilliant trading market to get in and out every single day or weeks or holding stuff for a few days or weeks. But as far as long term is concerned, I would stay out of it right now. I mean, almost everything is, you know, just going up, up and up. And it could still continue to go up and you might feel like it miss it. But I have a big saying in trading, which is I'd rather be out wishing I was in than being in and wishing I was out. <laughs> well, good discussion. And I appreciate the uh, good, uh, brutal, honest answers. And uh, hopefully uh, some of our listeners and viewers will uh, take you up here and uh, visit uh, LiveTraders.com. So, and Maul, greatly appreciate you stopping by. And uh, we uh, wish you the best on the, uh, on the trading floor. Sure, thanks for having me. Nice uh, chat. Absolutely. Again, that was Anmol Singh, founder and CEO of Alive Traders. Learn more at LiveTraders.com. Also, more about us on TampaBayRadio.com. We're here Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., and also available on demand on iTunes and also on YouTube. Just go to ThatYouTubeChannel.com. And also, please subscribe to us. That helps uh, grow the uh, channel and leave some reviews and leave some comments. It really helps engagement on our channel. Again, you've been listening to That Business Show 2.0 where business becomes show business.